Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Matt here. Today I'm at the Stittsville Shooting Ranges on April 2nd, 2022, and I'm here at the first ever Rimfire Academy put on by the Canadian Rimfire Precision Series. This is a full day course with both clinic style and live fire uh, exercises to give shooters uh, the kind of basics and fundamentals of shooting a PRS style rimfire match. I thought this was a really cool idea. Rick asked me to come out and uh, just kind of be a little bit of a helper for anything that's needed and also to bring my cameras to capture the day for anyone else who is interested in doing this event. I believe there's already a couple scheduled across Canada and this is a really good opportunity for new shooters and people thinking about trying uh, PRS style rimfire to learn the basics kind of compressed into one day. So I jotted down the course material here in terms of what's covered throughout the day. It covers safety, accuracy versus precision, rifle setup and zeroing the rifle, marksmanship fundamentals, positional shooting, ballistics overview, wind fundamentals, and finally putting it all together to shoot a match. Obviously, uh, each of these topics can be very detailed and probably have a full day course in itself for each one. But we're gonna try and give shooters the basic of each one so they can get started. So I'm Rick Kattigback. Uh, I'm one of the instructors of Project Maple Sea. Um, and I also founded ORPS and CRPS, I guess, yeah. four years ago. Uh, so I apologize for all the money you guys are spending on this hobby. Most people don't even take that first step of going to a competition because they're afraid of getting measured and falling below where they think they're gonna be. Well, let me tell you right now, if you've never shot this before, you're gonna suck, right? Just, just embrace the suck because that's the reality of where you are today. If you have no prior experience or no knowledge, how can you expect to do well, right? So forget about it, just enjoy the learning process. That's what it is, you're soaking up everything that we have to give you and you're probably gonna retain 15 to 20% of it, right? But that's okay, at least you're, you're 15 to 20% more than the guy who didn't. What makes a good shooter a good shooter? Consistency. Consistency. Thank you, Alex. Consistency. Yeah, it'll warm up though. Just tuck, tuck your mouth underneath the line. Just get the front edge under the line. This is how we decide who needs extra help and who doesn't. Simple, simple commands. Yeah, just tuck it up under. There you go. There you go, that's it. So far, so good, Rick. I'll give the rifle a feature. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that you matched it to your ear pro as well. Yeah, yeah no, that's, that that's amazing. Good. That was deliberate. It's like, hmm, I've already got the ear pro I like. I like this color. <laughs> Nothing wrong with the good old RPR. Three of them are and now what you're going to do, just close your eyes, get comfortable behind your rifle, keep that finger away from the trigger, perfect. Alright, and now once you're comfortable, open your eye. Can you see through your scope? You good? So basically, if, if you're a little too low, if you don't get a good eye relief, then we can shim, add like some foam on your, on your stuff. But if it's already fitted to you, we're good to go. Get behind the rifle, get nice and comfortable. And then open your eye. Let yep. me know if you need to raise your cheek at all. I do need to raise my cheek. Okay, we'll get you some foam. Okay. All right, so we're here with uh, Colin. Colin, uh, just let me know uh, what you're trying to get out of today at the uh, Rimfire Academy. Well, um, quite a beginner. Only shot two matches so far. Okay. And I uh, realized I got a lot to learn. So, <laughs> you know, as soon as this came available, it was like, yeah, got to come and sign up and uh, learn, awesome. learn the basics, learn, learn how to do this properly. For sure. Is there anything uh, that really piqued your interest in, in the course material today specifically or just kind of everything in general? Yeah, I, I'm going to see um, probably a trajectory. Learn, trajectory. Learn to use yeah. the, uh, to go further than 100 yards. Yeah, basically. perfect, so, exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. that's definitely one of the, the biggest sort of uh, uh, difficulties going from like an ORPS match, a club level match, to like a, a bigger match out to 400 plus yards, right? Yeah, yeah. Is understanding the ballistics. So. Yeah. Awesome, thanks. Okay, thank you. So I'm here with Eric at the Rimfire Academy, obviously. Uh, is there anything specifically you wanted to try and get out of today's course? I wanted to get a run through on uh, the equipment, the techniques, and the general procedure for a competition. And I'm really interested in getting started, and I'd like to get started on the right foot. So. Awesome. So, and and you've never shot a PRS style match yet? Never. No. Never. Okay, but you've done the the maple seed course? I have not. No. I have not. Okay. Awesome. So we got a a fresh uh, <laughs> a fresh exactly. shooter. Like what what got you interested in PRS style uh, shooting? I stumbled on. Uh, I can't 
camera was one of Rick's videos or one of yours. Okay. And talking about Rimfire, the CRPS. Yep. And what? what um yeah, and that's what Let's got me interested. Uh, awesome. Like something. Yeah, hours of fun. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, I hope you get something out of today. Thank you. So hopefully we, we covered this part where we went from accuracy of, of low accuracy to higher accuracy, basically moving your zero to roughly around where your point of aim is. That's the whole goal. Congratulations. Most if not all of you were able to do it, except for Rick who had a mechanical, he hit his, his zero, zero stop, which stopped him from zeroing. <laughs> well done. Well done, zero stop. Good job. <laughs> Anything we do before, during, and after that shot is fired could have an effect on where that bullet ends up. And if you're shooting 10 of them, you've got 10 chances to, to affect that. And that's why you're getting the group sizes you're getting. So in order to increase precision or decrease the patch, time, we want to eliminate the pre-shot and post-shot activities that are detrimental to the, to the shot. The first thing we want to talk about is natural point of aim. We've already talked about it, right? It's a question of you just looking downrange, right? in a neutral body position so that I am naturally aligned toward where I want to shoot. We're going to talk about uh, truing the curve or adjusting the curve to match reality for whatever uh, reason. Okay. Uh, and okay. there's always two the options when you're, when you're truing the uh, curve. It's okay either the again. ballistic coefficient. So that who does not know what their bullet drop is at 100? Does everyone have a number that they're going to go with? Stay low, has it. Uh, bullet drop. Yeah. Do you have it? So if you want to, you want to write it down. Here, right? No, no. Okay, so just to, uh, Thank you. All right, one. Except we're going to oh, do twist right. You need to put 16. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. one in 16 inches. So, so the exercise is one. Calculate the 100 per point of impact from point of aim, and then adjust to where it is, and then note the difference. So note what your original recommended adjustment was. Yeah, going to 100 yards. Uh, I think some shooters are going to realize the accuracy difference between 50 and 100 very quickly. <laughs> I have the, uh, the diamond that's one. That machine down there will will give you your average velocity. You'll shoot five for ten rounds past it. Okay. And then you can plug that velocity into your ballistics calculator. Okay. You can override the the predicted velocity, okay. and it'll get you a little bit more accurate downrange. Okay. Yeah. So I will just take the water. Yeah. Perfect. Over there. Just doing averages here. Are we putting 10 shots or five? Five. Five, okay, yeah. They got the rest of the lives to gather data. <laughs> yeah, today's the basics. Today's the basics. Get them started, that's yep. right. Get them closer. Yeah. Here you go, Paul. Thank you, I'll be uh, back. Yeah. Come on, Nick. Let's see how fast she runs. You don't have to worry too much about aim, we're just getting velocity right now. Right. 1074. Yeah, pretty fast. We're here with uh, Karen, one of our one of our uh, members today. I just want to get your thoughts on kind of a, a midday update of how you're finding it so far. 
Uh, so far, I actually learned quite a lot. Awesome. Um, for me, it was more the cheek weld. Didn't Perfect. realize that my rifle didn't fit me properly. So yeah. that was a big one for me today. Yeah. And then the second one is just the whole ballistics, understanding yeah. that, how everything can affect it. Awesome. And yeah. And uh, just a little bit of background. Have you shot a PRS style match before? I've shot a couple, how many? December, January, February, March. Four ORPS matches. Okay. And, and that's it. And you're looking to push out the distance to some of the bigger matches? Yes. Awesome. Yeah. I like to try the Canadian Rimfire ones, shoot like the two and three hundred yards. Time. Yeah. Ballistics is huge for that. Is there anything else has a hundred yards? Wind and drop is a big factor, and then all the weird barricades. ORPS has a very standardized prop list. But once you start shooting off of chains and ropes and hanging stuff, it's a little bit of a different game. Wow. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for your update. Thank you. You're going to see a plethora of different barricades at these matches. They could be barrels, ladders, a truck. Most of these barricades can actually be treated the same. What really matters is the height of what you're shooting off of relative to the ground. So the best thing to practice barricades at home would be something like a ladder, because essentially you just want to develop a system of shooting off barricades from the ground up all the way to standing. And once you know how, how do you like to shoot off of a milk crate height barricade versus something like the fourth rung off a ladder, you can apply that to all barricades. So really the difference in barricades will be the surface area you have to work with and how, how stable it is. Once you know how you like to shoot from the different heights from all the way down prone to standing, you can apply that throughout all the barricades. The other factor about a barricade is usually it's a hard surface and your rifle is a hard surface and you want to minimize hard on hard contact. So that's where your, your bags come in. The first thing you're generally going to do is you're going to put your bag on the barricade. If it's something like a two by four or like a ladder rung, you can hang your bag if it has ears like this, but you want to essentially just minimize. Thanks. You made it. So, <laughs> so this is a, an example of a pump pillow. It's not what you would put on a barricade, it's more for positional. So if it's too high for me to have my, my, my uh, elbow on my knee, this fills the gap. Say the, the saw horses and stuff we have set up here is a perfect height to test what's more stable for you personally. Two knees on the ground or maybe trying to get that elbow support. Some shooters, even if it's low enough for them to get an elbow support, they don't shoot that way. They always shoot from here on up without without the need to elbow. It's just personal preference depending on what works for you. The most awkward place for most guys is is right about here. Somewhere between a milk crate and a five gallon bucket. A lot of guys struggle. They maybe they're not you're not flexible enough to get here. You know, I'm gonna have to stick one leg in. You might have a giant gut that gets in your way. You know, like. I was gonna call that a built in pump pillow. <laughs> a built in pump pillow, you know? Yeah, it's a typical muffin top. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and a lot of it has to do with your personal uh, flexibility and your body type and what that cheek will is very important because you can see my head obviously has to stay the same, but my neck. My body, everything's moving, right? So you want to make sure the way you put your face on the gun is the same, no matter what position you're in. Mm -hmm. That way, when you open your eye through the scope to look at the target, it's right there. If you have a bad cheek weld or a rifle that doesn't fit you, your prone position is going to be different than your kneeling position. When you open your eye through that scope, chances are you're not going to be able to see it. And you're going to waste a lot of time in a match going like this. You know, like, you see this a lot. And then 30 seconds is gone before you find the target. Yeah. Maybe I'll get a maybe I'll get a tack table set up. One more barricade. Yeah, exactly. So that's, that's what I was saying. Some shooters don't do that ever. Other shooters find it a, a lot more stable. Couldn't do it. It was like, I'm, this is too high compared to sitting here. And yeah. I'm like, no. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's all about preference and, and, and what works. There's just enough wobble. Exactly. Yeah, yeah you're, you're never going to be as stable as, as prone. Yeah. But you can be as stable as possible. Close, <laughs> or you yeah. can make a good shot. Exactly, yeah. When you shoot off a barricade, you can right. feel it. You can, yeah, yeah, you can yeah. feel the move. Well, I can see that, like, there's a rhythm to it. Yeah, exactly. Oh, come on, yeah. yeah, it's very interesting. Are you right-handed? Yes, I'm right-handed. You're right-handed. But so, Okay, so if you shoot this way, you actually want to have your right knee up and your left knee down. Yeah, because that way, that way you have... Oh, yeah, you feel the difference there, right? Now you're supporting the rear of the rifle with your knee and your elbow, and you can free up your left hand. You see how much stable this is. Yeah, so now that's how I find my target. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so now you gotta find your target, but at least you're more stable on, on the barricade. Yeah, yeah, that's actually a good idea. Yeah, Take a shot, yeah it's, it's unnatural because naturally you wanna put your, your left knee up. 
But when you're shooting off a barricade and you want that knee support, you want to put your right knee up for your, your dominant side. You're able to get pretty, pretty stable. You want to concentrate on the fundamentals. Your breathing. Pull the shot when you exhale and your, your trigger pull to be smooth and consistent with the follow through. Yep. That looks pretty solid. Good job. Thanks. How many of you saw their shots drifting from 50 to 100? Well, 50 to 100. Yeah. Was it drifting left or right? To the left. To the left. Okay. My grip the yeah. So which way is the wind coming from? From the right. Okay. Good. So that's your first wind lesson. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. God, I was worried I wouldn't get any lessons done today. <laughs> but that's what's important. That's that's now you know. So how much, how fast, how far, that's where the, the secret starts to come in. So if I have an if I have a, 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 an MRAD or a mill of wind at hundred, how much is it moving my bullet? 3.6. Right? It's the same. One mill of wind means the wind is pushing the bullet. 3.6 inches to the left or the right. In this case, it's pushing it to the left. left. Sometimes, if you have 16 targets downrange, 20 shots to do in two minutes, you're not gonna have time to dial. You're likely gonna have to hold. But they had talked about um, that you can see like the heat. Um, yeah, the mirage. Yeah. yeah, and I actually yeah. saw that today. I'm like, oh, that's what they're talking about. And I could see it going that way. Correct. Where our, where First thing, right, solid position, natural point of aim. Watch those triggers, relaxed, and then respiratory pause, and send it, okay? Once you got your trajectory, then you go up to that upper left and say, what's the wind doing? And then send your wind pull down. You say yes. Now, it's changing a curve. A curve isn't only gonna change that one spot, it's gonna change all intersecting points up to there. So you need to reconfirm your 100. Does that make sense? Uh, if it gets so bad that it's really out of whack, then you create two curves. One for groups past 200, and one for under 200, if it's so wildly off. And, oh, and never forget to push calculate when you're in the front. Yeah. You can never push it too much. I have done it where I didn't push it and I was way off. Because it doesn't automatically do it. So, so you're off. So, congratulations. This is a graduation ceremony. You've gone through all the steps. Uh, what's the first thing we worked on today? Fundamentals. fundamentals. What's fundamentals all about? Repeatability. Repeatability, consistency, and reducing variability whenever possible. The first thing we do is we make sure that we've got a good natural point of aim. Number two, the trigger finger can be good or bad. Typically it's bad unless you control it. Its only role is to activate that trigger with the least amount of force needed to activate it and not an ounce or a millimeter movement more. Okay. Building a good stable body position using your skeletal structure, not your musculature, to support your position. Using bags. Some of you tried and loved the uh, pump pillows. Yes. Uh, I gotta check your car because I can't find I my know. pump pillows. <laughs> I think I left it over there. Uh -huh, I'm I sure did, you did. did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, what's the next after fundamentals? Trajectory. Environmentals change. Keep information about what's happening, right? It's 20 degrees and it's 1.8, not 2.0. Okay? I need less in the heat. Or it's minus 12 and I need 2.4 or whatever, whatever it happens to be. Uh, if you can get velocity, it's good. Ted, shooting below 1,000 feet per second, right? Box is 1060. It, 60 feet per second is a huge difference. Right, so it's two or three clicks more. Right, so it's important. You confirmed it at 100, you confirmed it at 200. Is everyone confident now that given the right wind, no wind conditions, you can hit a 200 yeah. yard target. So now you know, that's your 10 degree, 200 yard zero with that ammo. We talked about estimating, how much wind is out there right now? Not, Not much. One. Not much. One. Are you gonna adjust for it? Yeah. Don't need to. Okay? 
figure out what your bracketing is, and that's your minimum, that's your maximum. If there's no wind, it's zero. Easy peasy, right? It's all multiples. You guys are experts. This is awesome. I'm gonna cry. I'm tearing up. <laughs> okay. Now, what can go wrong? Everything. Everything. Everything can go wrong. So the last thing we do on the ballistics is truing. So we have a calculated trajectory. There's a firing line, not all ranges will have a firing line at a competition. I think it's that imaginary line where all the muzzles are ex extended after. If you drop your bag forward of a barricade, it's gone. You can't touch it until the stage is done. If you drop anything else, a magazine, whatever, Twinkie, chopstick, it's gone until the stage. Maybe even for the day because it's an active firing line until the ceasefire. Yeah, we got everyone? Yeah. Alright. Colin. Colin, you understand the course fire? Yeah, I do. You can load and make ready. He's gonna take the chamber flag out, put in his mag while leaving his bolt open. Cannot stress that enough. He's gonna make sure that he knows which target he's engaging first. He probably already has it dialed. He's gonna change his parallax so it makes sense and it's not all blurry. He's gonna make sure his magnification makes sense. Yep. Spotter ready? Yep. All right, stand by. Sorry, give me a sec. Make sure my ass crack's not gonna hang out. Yeah, all right, stand by. So into position one. He's gonna settle onto target, make sure it's in his scope reticle and he can see it before closing the bolt. He's gonna make a first round impact because he's done the WTF. <laughs> and boom. He's gonna transition to the middle target. You can see he didn't dial, so he's holding in his reticle right now. He's gonna make a second round impact. Impact. He's gonna go back to the first. It's gonna be in the middle of his reticle because that's what he dialed for. Impact. Bolt open, transition. He's now going to engage the far target four times in a row. He dialed for that, probably because he can't math it in his reticle. <laughs> and now he's going to engage it four times. Impact. 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 Both open, transition, same thing as the first. Dial for the first target, he's gonna probably hold for the second and then hit, hit the mid, uh, near one again. Impact. Aww. I heard something though. Oh, no. no. Impact. There we go, one. And that was an 80 seconds, so he had 40 seconds to spare. That was pretty smooth, right? So 40 seconds to spare, if he wanted to, he could have probably dialed everything if he wanted. But that was a good little example there. Now he's done shooting the stage. As the RI say, uh, show clear, or show safe and make clear. He's gonna make sure his bolt's open, take out the magazine, and put in the chamber flag. Once I see that he's safe, I can say, you can uh, come off the line. And that is how you run through a stage. And he only dropped oh. one point. I, got you I thought I missed zero. <laughs> All right, so uh, does that make sense to everybody? Yep. Makes sense? All right. Shooter, are you ready? Yes. All right, stand by on the beep. So again, when the timer goes off, the best thing you can do for your score is not to panic and just go through exactly what Rick was talking about all day. Fundamentals, make sure your position is good, your rock's solid, and then you take the shot. Taking into account impact, taking into account wind, and your dope and everything like that. Impact! Safe. Good. All right, you ready, Ted? Yes. All right, stand by. All right, you're going on the left side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. 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 Impact! Left edge. 
price was right. Yeah. You're high there. Are you going to stand in this car? But thanks. Impact! Good thanks, thanks. correction. Impact! Nice. That was four, right? I didn't get yep. this advice when I was in the <laughs> Ah. Nice, good shooting. Yeah. Unload and show clear. You had 35 seconds remaining. Pretty good. Thank you for the features. Uh, yeah, no worries. Yeah, that's clear. You're very low. Check your uh, check your dial. Make sure you're good. So impact. Nice, good correction. Good bolt open transition. Nice. Hit the far one four times, or shoot at it yeah. four times. Oh, he's gonna right. hit it. Yeah, he's gonna Put hit that it. positive mi mindset out there. <laughs> that was a brutal. One. <laughs> Impact! Hell yeah! How we do it? Impact! He's got it. That one was a little. Yep, one more. Impact! Nice. Both open, transition, very good. No, this is my first time doing like, impact. Uh, Did you clean it? Straight. Wow. Yeah. Hey, so you cleaned it in the least time. Congratulations. <laughs> in a minute, ten? Or? No, no, uh, in 50 seconds. That's awesome. Wow. Thank you. This is actually great. Yeah, that's, that was awesome. I'm probably Clear. not going to do go. this. Impact. With a Nikon Pro Staff scope and then with a DDC. Impact. Impact. Nice. Yeah. So you're re-engaging that target. Yeah. I think I saw it. Impact. We saw oh, here, cool, going up to the shop and buying a diamond back to the school. Impact. Nice. Back to the, back to the bay. So when there's this many transitions in a stage, remember safety is still number one. So the semis, you have to make sure you put it on safe and declare it and bolt open. Don't let rushing get in the way of safety. Because that's how you get DQ'd and yeah, no one wants to be DQ'd. Stand by. Three, two, one, engage. I'm not the tall one of the time. Yeah, it's tough to get a stable. Probably would be better bending at the waist. New barrel, even. Oh. well not new, but <laughs> new to you. Oh, there, yeah. Both open. Thank you. <laughs> In fact, nice. Oh, uh, open your bolt. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Open your bowl. Sorry. Yeah, no, no worries. Yeah, one needs to be. Are they like sturdy? Yeah, they're like fishing bags. It's got to be organic. I don't like fishing bags. Thanks. Take the shot anyway if you want. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's with some interest, but I think once we get CRP, we're only going to see the CRP as well. In fact, awesome. Hey, good job, man. We got you for five. Yeah. So, unloading so quick. So, what you did is actually perfect. Because when you're starting, you want to really focus on the kind of focus. And the, the speed will come. Yeah. Right? And, and if you notice, eat every shot you took, you made the hit. Dead and so, that's exactly what we're to You're going to be yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, just, uh, yeah. Yeah. Just trying to get in some position. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a good job. There's like, a lot to think the, about. So. Where's the target? Yeah. Yeah. So we're here with uh, Corrado. Uh, I just want to ask you how you found the, the entire course today. You've just finished shooting the three-stage mini-match and you did pretty well. You uh, you did really well in the KOL. So. I did okay. It yeah. was a little nerve-wracking not having uh, done it before, but I think it's a great opportunity instead of showing up to a match and yeah. then 
and then not knowing what to do, this is a great opportunity to, you know, to meet some people and to uh, to shoot a course of fire. Yeah. So it was a lot of fun. Did you uh, did you take away anything specifically from the course material that was most interesting or most helpful? I guess. Well, I I, I have an idea of the fundamentals in that. I didn't know how to use the Sherlock Pro. Um, right. What I took it took away was all the safety stuff that we we had talked about because sure. obviously there is you know, yeah. there is a uh, regimen that yeah. we need to abide by yeah. and yeah so awesome yeah going through the motions making sure that it kind of becomes muscle memory so you can use your brain power to focus on getting hits afterwards that's right <laughs> yeah, yeah awesome. that's right instead of worrying about okay yeah. am I am I doing this right am I holding everybody up yeah, yeah. yeah. and so just for a little bit of history have you shot a, a PRS style match before I haven't saw, uh, shot a PRS style match I've taken like kind of long range shooting course okay. before and all that nice. but never a match okay but you plan to this summer i do yeah, awesome schedule for may I think. perfect well thank you very much thanks so we're here with paul another one of our members today at the uh, rimfire academy paul just a quick history uh, have you shot any pr style rimfire matches before i haven't this is my first uh time with something like this I, okay i went to your introduction to uh the rimfire disciplines there that was down oh in cornwall yeah very nice okay that was awesome fun. so uh out of today, what would you say was uh, your biggest takeaway from the course material? Um, to learn how to zero your scope <laughs> after each uh, yeah. stage so you don't end up losing your zero. Awesome, but yes. you found it uh, pretty helpful today getting oh, yeah. you started? Yeah, for sure. Awesome. For sure. Yeah, how'd you find the mini match? Uh, fun. <laughs> um, I prefer the prone shooting over the, <laughs> the barricades, but okay. all in time. You'll... Yeah, so uh, you uh, you plan to do some matches this summer then? I am. I'm signing up for the one in Avonmore there. April, uh, at the end of April. April. Awesome, I'll see you and there. And then I see this one uh, down in the Avonmore again this summer, so two day thing, so probably do that. Sweet. Oh, nice and close by. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed today. Thank yeah, you very well, much. Well, thank you guys for uh, running all this and thanks for all your help. So we're just about wrapped up the first ever Rimfire Academy from uh, the Canadian Rimfire Precision Series. It was quite a long day. I believe it's around 5.30 now, but it was pretty neat to see the improvement in the shooters as the day went on. Uh, we started with talking about some of the fundamentals in PRS style shooting, then we had them confirm their zero at 50, and then their trajectory dope at 100 and 200, and then we kind of combined the teachings of positional shooting, trajectory, and dope, uh, how to use your scope and rifle, as well as wind holds, and we kind of wrapped it all together and did a mini stage, or pardon me, mini match with three stages, and the new shooters got to test out their new knowledge, and it seemed to be a pretty big hit. Lots of guys were having a, a lot of fun and learning a lot, seeing what they can improve on, and most importantly, what they should focus on going forward to uh, kind of improve in this shooting discipline. Tom here was the other helper, instructor, along with Rick, of course. Uh, how'd you find I guess the day overall, like did you see trends in the students' performance and whatnot? Huge improvement. I mean, there's a lot of small little details that make a big difference in uh, PRS, like which knee comes up and things yeah. like that. And you can see the natural tendency at first at the beginning of the day, and then we slowly break them up and yeah. uh, they'll, they'll change yeah. you know, how they set up. So I think it was good. We will tweak the course material slightly based on feedback, of course, today, because this was the first time you ever run it, or ran it, uh, but it seemed pretty good. Again, the pr progression of how you kind of set everything up to building up their skills and then shooting the mini match is a pretty great way to give a quick introduction to, to new way. shooters. Yeah, and a lot of fun as well. So I, loved, I loved seeing some of the new shooters hit targets and being like, wow, I made that hit you know well for a lot of guys hitting that 175 target yeah that's the first and I mean I don't have statistics to back this up but not a whole lot of people have hit a target a 10 inch target at 175 with a 22 with a 22 so. yeah so it, it was an great. accomplishment yeah and uh, if anyone watching is thinking of uh, getting into the sport but they don't know where to start or what skills they need to build up definitely look for a rimfire Academy because there's several across Canada this summer and uh, thanks for watching I guess <laughs> time for dinner yeah <laughs>